So right off the bat, I want to show you guys, and this is something I'm actually really thrilled about on my system, that we've done a lot under the hood when it comes to opening up larger projects with many, many sound bites. I know we have a lot of very talented people that do tours, they're musical directors, producers, they're building live playback systems, or they're composers that have lots of audio files and big projects. So here's a project that I have, and this is an 11.2, and I'm on a laptop system here. Let me just double click to open up this project here. It's a large mixing film remix project that I'm working on right now. So I want you guys to see that this project has literally it's 13 gigabytes with thousands of cuts and edits, and it just immediately opens. So, I mean, just the fact, right off the bat, the way that TP opens, the way that it reads the plugins, the way that it reads sound bites, if I'm able to, you know, copy and paste massive sections, I can, you know, if I want to fly something out, let's say in the timeline out here, you know, the, the time, everything is just so much snappier when it comes to flying things around. So efficiency, efficiency has been you know, greatly improved because one of the things we have, you know, we've got certain testers like Mike McKnight who are out on the road and they'll, they're using the new M1 system and they're coming up with things that we're we'll able to, you know, write for to make the code even better. So, so check out the efficiency part of it. Um, let me just close this project here. We're not going to save it. I'm going to go over to my other project here. Let's just start with my first one, which is this project here. We'll just double click it. At one point I had it all sort of embedded as chunks in one big project and I thought, you know what, with everything I'm doing with, with Zoom and everything else, I'm just going to break it out. So remember in DP, if you have a bunch of chunks in one project, you can just open a new empty project and then you can just load in the individual chunks. That's how you would do that. Create an empty project and then load the individual chunks from the big project and you can parse those out. That's what I did today. So what are we going to talk about? A few more features. Let's talk about something here in DP, which is a mode in the MIDI editor. So in the MIDI editor, you guys see up above here on the right that we have a fixed grid. That's what I like to use, a fixed grid. So no matter what the zoom level is, it shows me in this case quarter notes. You know, here's bar one, beat one, two, three, four. And of course we do have an auto grid, right? Auto grid. It's all about the zoom level. Right now it shows quarter notes. As I zoom down, it's showing me eighth notes. We also have a triplet grid. So this is a new small little feature in 11.2, but it comes in pretty handy. So let's just back up to the beginning here so you can see if I zoom out, so now you can see, let's go all the way out to this. We go zoom in even farther. So as we look at the triplet grid here, you'll see, you know, one triplet, two triplet, here's beat two, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. So when you're in the triplet grid, if I zoom in a little bit, you'll get into one triplet and triplet two. So as you're working with triplets, you want to stay in that mindset, but you want to be able to change the resolution and zoom in and still maintain that beat division of three. You can do that now with this new auto triplet mode. And we have a shortcut. Remember, under setup commands, you can just go straight in. And if you start typing in triplet, you'll see here that you're able to, let me actually type triplet here. So you can toggle the auto triplet grid snap mode as a command. So new little feature, small, but I want to show you guys something interesting as it relates to MIDI patch through under preferences. So if we go down here into MIDI, uh, let's see, under the patch through options here. So let's go down into MIDI options. So these patch through modes, which they used to be set specifically for each project. They were project specific, now they're global. So for some of you who maybe do touring where you want to you turn off certain channelizations or you want to turn off patch through in the background, this is now set globally, which is a better way to work in a lot of ways because most of us don't really need to change this. Auto channelize is something we use all the time. That's for everyday use with virtual instruments and hardware devices. Patch through in the background just means that when DP is, is hidden, you're still able to patch through a virtual instrument, that kind of a thing. And also this is a new setting here by default. This is unchecked, which is sync recorded MIDI to patch through. Leave this unchecked. This is so the timing is the best when it comes to larger buffers. If your somebody has to run at 512 or 256, uh, you know, this is going to make sure the timing is really good when you're playing your controller. So these are new sort of global uh, preferences. So once you set it in one project, you've now set it for all projects. I want to show you something simple here, which has to do with the soundbite layer. So let's do that. We'll go into the sequence editor here, and I've got just a simple vocal track here. Now, if I switch to the pitch layer, you'll see that we've got some pitch correction in here, ZTX, in fact. They've changed the behavior now. So when you're in this pitch layer, and let's say we make this track a little bit bigger, if you click on the color bar at the top, it automatically switches you back. 
So that's just a way that we restored it. It's a quick way to work, right? Now, there isn't a shortcut necessarily to switch back to the pitch layer itself. I mean, if you use something like Keyboard Maestro, you could set up a command to do that. And I'll keep asking the developers to add a shortcut to switch to the pitch layer. But one thing I did want you guys to see is if I'm in the soundbite layer, don't forget that you have lanes, right? If I open up the lane, I can show pitch at the same time. So now it's just a question of where I am, where I am, and then to change the actual zone here, the register. So this is actually kind of a cool way to work in the sense that I'm going to start edge editing my audio, and you'll see that as I do it, my mouse is being a little grumpy here, you'll see that it updates to show the pitch data lane down below. So we can undo. So this might be an interesting way to work. I want to see the soundbite. I want to update my volume, yet I have a lane down below that's showing me pitch. So just as a quick reminder, but you do have the ability to switch back now by simply clicking on the top color bar. Simple little thing. So we can close the lane down below. A couple other mentions that I wanted to go over with 11.2. We fixed some uh, issues relating to MP3 recording that got, or excuse me, MPE that got recorded. Uh, music XML, that's something that we do now. We've got some very talented in-house uh, developers that are working on music XML. So improvements for markers, uh, minor chord symbols, uh, small note heads, also timed page text. There's a lot of improvements that are happening when you, as you export scores from Quickscribe as music XML files to send on over to Dorico, Finale, uh, Sibelius, stuff like that. So again, always improvements that are happening here on music XML. There's been improvements for complete control complete control in terms of volume and pan responsiveness. Console one users, there's fixes for color ordering. Uh, Yukon, there's been some updates related to the way that you can select and change effects. So again, lots of interesting little fixes. But of course, the banner thing we're gonna talk about today is ARA support. So let's do that. In fact, let me actually just switch here and double click to bring up ARA. So audio random access created by Celimony. You know, it allows supporting plugins to access and analyze audio data in sound files prior to playback. So basically, it's a very deep level that's different than other audio plugins. And now with this integration in DP, I mean, it's just, it's an amazing integration. So you think about DP, right, with pure DSP, which we added DP4, which is this amazing pitch correction. And then, of course, we, uh, we brought ZTX and DP9. And now we have ARA integration with Melodyne. So this is really powerful, which one thing I wanted to mention is that we actually provide a copy of Melodyne Essentials as a part of your DP registration. So let's just talk about it for a quick minute. I'm going to switch over here to my keynote. So this is my registration, and this is what it would look like on your login here at motu.com. So my registration, here's my DP11 registration. At the bottom of the page, you'll see this is the free content that comes with your registration. And you'll see Melodyne Essentials. Just click on it and you'll be able to activate, you know, and get your key code for Melodyne Essentials. So this is actually pretty amazing when you think about it. This is just a couple of quick bullet points, okay? Melodyne, obviously you have pitch correction, note-based music, musical operation, fine-tuning note assignments. Now, Essentials doesn't have DNA. DNA is the polyphonic pitch correction. That's what sort of Melodyne is known for, right? So, but that's okay. You still have monophonic vocal instrumental tracks and so on and so forth in terms of dealing with those algorithms, whether time stretching or transposition. You get the main tool in Essentials, which is a quick way to kind of be able to make big moves and lasso a bunch of notes and things like that. The main tool is pretty intuitive and you'll pick it up qu pretty quickly as you play with it. Obviously, it has chord functions with chord grid and chord track, and it'll identify the chords. So there's a, a neat feature in Melodyne as you're playing musical things and you want to see what the chords are. And there's macros. I'll talk a little bit about the macros um, for pitch and time and volume. Now, something interesting, many of you have, you know, full versions of Melodyne. And if you have, let's say you're on version four, the current version is version five. You want to be on version five to run ARA and DP. But you can use the voucher that we provide as an upgrade path to save money. And it's actually, it's great. So again, maybe take advantage of that if you're on an older version of the full, of full Melodyne, you know, use this voucher as a, as a coupon. And so you can take advantage of that. So that's something you'll want to actually do. And by the way, quick point I wanted to make also is, let me actually hide that and go back here for a second. If you already own Melodyne, 
don't bother putting essentials on there. There's no benefit to doing that. They're not separate programs. So if you have the full version, don't feel like you have to install essentials. They're not separate, so just run the full version. But if you don't have Melodyne whatsoever and you have a license of DP11, now you have essentials. So that's a really th nice thing that we did there. Okay, so let's do a little talk about this a little bit. Um, ARA plugins in DP. Okay, so this is an important point I want to make. It requires the VST3 version of the plugins. The VST3 version. You know how when you buy a new plugin bundle, let's say a virtual instrument, and you do the install. These days, I kind of like to tell people, just do an easy install. Now, it will install the audio unit VST, AAX version, oftentimes the standalone version. And it takes up a little bit more hard drive space, but now you're covered in terms of all the plugin formats. So if you did a custom install of audio unit, let's say, audio units, you can just go back and run the reinstaller and pick the VST3 version. Because remember, the VST3 version is the version that will work for ARA. It's the only version. So ARA does not work with audio units currently. So on a Mac, let's just look at something here in preferences. Let's go up to the top into audio plugins. So you'll see, if I start typing in here VST, make sure that your mass VST support is checked. Now it's interesting, the three support is different than the regular VST. So VST is one and two, those versions, and we have a separate mass VST3 support. Make sure that that's checked. That's the one that you want to use for ARA. Cool. So got to have that turned on. Make sure you install the latest version. In the case of Melodyne, make sure it's version five, which is something interesting I want you guys to see down here, which is we click on ARA compatibility. So once I bring this up, you guys can see in here that obviously Melodyne is good to go. It shows me the version number. It shows me whether it's compatible. Now, right off the bat, you'll see there's a couple in here that are blacklisted currently. For instance, very powerful, great programs, Revoice Pro and Vocaline. It, that's going to happen. You know, the, obviously testing is ongoing with the development teams between our team and their team, and there's a lot going on right now. So, so stay tuned. You know, that's going to happen at some point. You know, our friend Bo Astrup uh, has turned me on to Acoustica, which is a great program from Acon Digital. It looks like it's mostly running, maybe a few tweaks we've got to do. So as, by the way, if you get into ARA plugins and there's a new product, you know, please send us suggestions at motu.com. That's a great way to reach out and say, hey, there's this new program. It's ARA. We'd love to see it. And that's a quick way to get in touch with, with, with us on something like that. So it tells me what version I'm running, whether they're compatible, and you'll see some things are untested, that, which by the way, it'll still run. It's just that it's not fully tested and some things just will not, you know, they'll not work until we actually update and get them on the right page. So stay tuned for Synchro Arts. That's gonna happen here at some point. Um, let's go back over here into my Melodyne chunk. So get the plugins going, check your compatibility, and we'll close this window here and we'll save. And let's just switch over here to a different chunk. So once this comes up, I want to get into this. It's interesting for a lot of users who thought, you know, when you're a DP user, you may not have been, needed to be a really big sort of Melodyne user. You know, the pitch correction has been so good for so long. And, you know, I, I've always had sort of Melodyne, I and mean, I wasn't an expert, but I would use it on occasion, but I always would reach for pitch correction inside DP. It's just so easy. It's just so in line to switch to pitch and be able to do your work. And, and we have obviously some great producers on here, like Fernando Garbe and his team that have used all these tools with major artists. So it's, a, it's very, you know, tried and true and well-tested. But now imagine we have the ability to have, you know, ARA and Melodyne built into the timeline. So let's talk about, so what is Melodyne really known for? DNA, that's kind of its sort of signature. Polyphonic pitch correction. Now I'm going to actually show you a basic form of how that works. The formants and its ability to work on challenging material and quantizing. Those are the three things that really have put, you know, Melanine in particular on the map. And so now we have it inside DP. So how do we do it? How do we actually put ARA in motion here inside DP. Well, I've got a couple of tracks here. This is just a simple track. This is Chuck Langford, saxophone player from the Boston area, gave me this pop track he was working on. And so let's just use ARA in this. So we've got just a couple of vocal tracks here in view. So now in terms of adding it, and we can do it in a couple of different ways. So let's start by just highlighting the track and we're gonna go up here to audio, ARA. And what's interesting is you'll see that we can just set Melodyne on tracks, okay? The track has to be selected and all I have to do is click on it and you'll see, boom. So that's the quick way to do it, right? Right off the bat is to be able to add it to the selected tracks from the audio menu. Notice over here, by the way, in the sequence editor that there's a new pop-up right here. See, take, 
Melodyne. This is the ARA pop-up. So I can say, well, no, we're not going to use ARA at all. I'm just going to zero that out. So you can add it here. We can go back to Melodyne. So switch it. Or we can do it from up above in the audio menu. You can also, by the way, add it to the specific sound bite. So let me clear it for a second. We'll just go over here to None. And let's just make a cut here with the scissor tool. The letter C, I'm just going to make a cut right there. I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to right click. Or I can go to the menu. Let's start with the menu. Audio, ARA. I want to set Melodyne on the sound bite. So now it's interesting. Every sound bite could have a different ARA effect. That's pretty cool, right? You might use spectral layers on one sound bite. You might use Melodyne on one sound bite. You might use it on the whole track. So there's different ways to actually do it, right? Uh, so we can actually, I can right click, which is a very handy way to do this. And I could come back in here and say, well, ARA, I can use the track ARA effect. So if I actually did have an overall ARA effect, I could switch back to what the whole track is using. Or I could switch individual sound bites, or I can just disable it, say, no. Nope. And you'll see it, by the way, there's visual feedback in the soundbite itself as to what ARA effect is being used. So that's actually pretty cool. So remember, being able to set it for the track, being able to set it here from the pop-up. There's also a menu here where you can go into ARA. You know, it's whatever sort of makes sense for you as you want to add those. So that's very easy. Same thing for clearing, right? I just talked about being able to take it off here. Or same thing here. If it's for the track, I go back up to audio ARA, and I can clear the ARA effects on the tracks. You guys saw here, I can do the same thing for sound bites. So let's just take a quick look here. I can clear ARA effects on sound bites. Easy in a right click as well, clear or disable. So it's very easy to add it, right? And so now let's, th let's think about um, being able to actually use it here uh, in an actual track. So let's go down here. You talked about clearing the state. Now, something I want you guys to see, which is under the project menu, this is where we go down into ARA, okay? So you'll notice that ARA right now is set up that it's attaching itself to the body of the consolidated window. And so, you know, I, obviously if I double click, I can rip it out. Not all ARA effect windows are resizable. Some are, some, some aren't. But you can certainly tear it out of the consolidated window. You can double click at the top to pop it back in, which brings up something interesting. If I go into my preferences for consolidated window, you'll see at the bottom here, I can choose to have ARA effect you know, embed itself into the consolidated window or not. I can just, if I deselect it, it will show up outside of the consolidated window. So that's something I can easily do. But I like to have it in there. That works pretty well for me. Um, just remember, it could also be a part of a window set. So maybe you're in a situation where you're kind of going into a vocal mode here and you want to have your AR, you have a big monitor in front of you, let's say, and you want to be able to say, well, I've got everything set exactly like I want. I'm going to do some vocal work today. I'll go up and go ahead and save this as a window set. It'll be my ARA window set. So that's something you could easily do. So as we talked about, we have visual feedback. So if I close this, let's actually use, let's just take this first section right here. I'm going to highlight it. In fact, actually, why don't we do both tracks? I'm going to select all, and we'll go back up here to audio, and we'll go to ARA. And why don't we set Melodyne on tracks? So here it is. Now look, everybody, at the bottom. I have two tracks. It's funny, in the vocal track, let me zoom down here to show you. If we go all the way out, this other vocal part just doesn't happen until the very end of the track. So, by the way, if I grab my wiper and I hold control and I drag down, I can view. I've got the first track. I've got the second track. Now, check this out. In the bottom, in the ARA window, I can't toggle the view like this. Okay, The way you toggle it is you click on the sound bite. See? Click on the sound bite, which will toggle the view down below. That's the way it's designed. Now, it's interesting. You might think, well, is that going to get in the way of my editing work if I, if, I, if I click on this down below? So now remember, you know, you can always use, like let's say, for instance, in this case, you wanted to actually come in here and you wanted to be able to make a cut. Sometimes, let's say you're, you're focused on one. You could double click, which will change the view. But remember, the control key, the control key is a quick way to be able to make a selection. So let's go to Command Y to cut that or something like that, undo. So that's something that you, you know, just to keep in mind, but when you have multiple tracks down below using ARA, just click on the track itself. So we'll go down below and updates it. So that's something I want you guys to see. Now there's also something that's very important, which is as I start editing vocals in Melodyne, the waveform itself in DP does not change. It doesn't change. The way to capture it, so let's say you did want to see it, you want to see it reflect in the soundbite itself. Well, what you have to do at that point is simply merge the audio file, audio, merge. 
You're basically what you're doing in the case of ARA is you're writing the ARA effect changes into the soundbite itself. So that's how you would see it. Now you could bounce it. Now, do you need to see it? It's an interesting question, right? Because a lot of people might ask, like, do I have to render everything as I work with ARA? No. You could completely work for the next two weeks on a, on a mixing project and leave your ARA effects just running in real time. Keep tweaking them, editing them, all the way to the very end, create your stems, create your full mix, move on. We don't have to render it, but obviously in some cases you might be sending something off to a mixer or it's going to go on a different rig, but I want to make sure I've got it all in there. Great. Highlight the audio file, merge it, merges in the ARA. So that's an important thing to consider. And so that also means in a way it might be smart to duplicate, maybe you'd want to duplicate the take, duplicate the audio, duplicate the take so that you're working, you have the other also as a safety. So that's something to think about too. So we've got an ARA effect here on two. Let's just do a little bit of work here inside Melodyne. So we can actually, if I wanted to get rid of this track, by the way, as you guys know, I could just go to the pop-up and just say, well, you know, I'm not going to worry about you right now. We're just going to worry about the lead vocal. So down below, so that means, of course, we can hide it from the track selector and we can just kind of resize this a little bit so we can see what's happening. And why don't we do that here too? We'll just go like this so we can really get tidy, save. All right, so now we're down below. We're actually gonna work on the vocal a little bit. So let's just back up here to bar, I don't know, somewhere at the beginning, bar nine-ish. So let's do that. Don't tell me it's over. Don't tell me we're through. Can't so it looks like this particular soundbite, I'm gonna actually tell it to use Melodyne. So there it is. And let's back, by the way, when I'm inside Melodyne, notice that we can click. There's a gray bar above these meters, by the way, and we have our grid. We do have our bars, we do have our grid, and we do have our snap. But if I click up above, I can do that from down below. So you just have to click on this bar down below. Of course, I could grab it up here in DP. That's something I can easily do. Now down below, you know, obviously this is where we can get into some basic stuff. So let's do that. I'm able to just, you know, grab a note. And of course, option will toggle the grid. Undo. Now, here's something very, very important. All the undo and redo actions happen inside the ARA effect. Look, the last thing I did in Digital Performer was set that sound by ARA mode. So you might go, oh, I'm just going to undo in DP. No, no, make sure that the ARA effect window is active. And then you can go over here to edit and you can do your undo. So that's important. I want to make sure you guys understand that. Um, and so now, of course, down below, you know, we can obviously zoom in if you've got this. Now, here's something interesting. You know, obviously we can lasso. So let me just grab these notes, something like this. And as you guys know, one of the beautiful things about ARA is that you have these macros, right? First and foremost, a pitch macro. You see this last note, by the way, this last note, she's a little sharp on this. Listen to this. Don't tell me we're through. Just a little on the high side of that note. Well, no problem. I can just pitch center with the macro and I can come down. I can massage this a little bit. So we were able to do it with the pitch macro. Maybe I would actually err on the side of the first of that half step and then I can recenter the pitch. So I might do it like that and say, well, okay, so let's just go down and let's back up and see. Can't take so let's no back up a little bit. We're through. Oh, I'm kind of like the old way. We can undo that like this. But we also have things like being able to come in and change the quantizing, right? So in here, what's my grid set to? Auto. Yeah, that's fine. So you'll notice as I'm sliding, it's changing the positional timing of those different blobs or those different pitches. So I can apply quantization. Obviously, we talked about the pitch tool. We actually have a, a leveling tool as well as it relates to volume. So again, now there's a cool shortcut that I want you guys to see. You know, of course you can come in here and you can change the duration of the notes as well, as you guys know. So I'm not gonna go deep, deep into the actions of, because there's so much other ground we're gonna cover today. There's a lot of great YouTube videos. I'm sure many of you are experts on editing within ARA, but I want you guys to see intuitively being able to, you know, lasso and use these macros for timing, for pitch, changing individual notes and grid snap and so on and so forth. That's all the stuff that you're gonna be able to very quickly intuitively get to work on. Or here's an example, right? I might wanna highlight this and go up here and say, let me switch here and go down into pitch drift or how about a modulation drift? So I click on that and now I can, 
I can minimize vibrato. You know, again, you'll, you'll pick up on all these various things. So now we go back to the regular tool. Here's something interesting. Melodyne has its own sort of shortcuts for zooming, right? So here's what I did. Go up to Settings, Preferences, and we go up here at the top to Shortcuts. Go down to View Configuration. I changed zooming to match DP zooming, okay? So look, zoom in, zoom out, vertically in and out, I've changed to what Digital Performer uses. So, because I'm just so used to, so I'm using my arrow keys to do that kind of a work. And it's just, it's very intuitive. It's, it's faster for the way that I work since I'm not gonna probably work as much in the standalone version of Melodyne. I'll probably use it as ARA. So that's a quick shortcut, being able to update those to do it that way. So the macros, there's also something very important I want you guys to see. If I make a dramatic change, to, let's say let's something like that, or I hold option, and we back it up just a little bit. Yeah, and maybe I'll go even a tiny bit sharper on this. We'll hold option. So that's what we have in there. Now, we don't have a bypass button. We don't have a bypass button, but we have a compare button. So compare sort of is the what you'll use to turn it off temporarily, compare. And we can obviously toggle compare. No, no, let's hear what it sounded like. No, let's hear it without. Do I have to disable it up here? I don't. Hit the compare button. That's a quick way to do that. So now that's something that I want you guys to see. Now, remember, it's just playing in real time. Now, if I want to commit it, you guys know I could highlight the soundbite. I could either bounce it back in or I could merge it and print it in. So that's just a quick thing, and we'll do a little bit. We'll do more in Melodyne in just a moment. I want to talk just for a minute and how that relates to Pure DSP for a second. Let me actually quit the ARA window here. We're going to highlight the soundbite, right click, go to ARA. We're going to disable it. So we're going to do that. It's gone. So this soundbite doesn't have anything on it. We're going to switch over here to the pitch layer, and in DP, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go down into choose Pure DSP, which is Motus. And let me just zoom in here for a second. Let's say we take a note here. So let's do something like this with her voice. Don't tell me. So let's do it like this. Let's put, use the merge tool to merge these blocks together. And we'll go, don't tell me. Let's hear it. Don't tell me. So let's say we switch to that as an example. Now I'm using Pure DSP right now. If I go up here now and say, oh, well, you know what? I want to go back to the soundbite layer, highlight this, right click, go down and actually use Melodyne on that. It's going to tell me, oh, wait a minute, you can't use Pure DSP at the same time. Pure DSP has sort of a deep level analysis that would conflict with using Melodyne and ARA. But here's something interesting. When I hit OK, it actually kept my move, only it did the move with ZTX. So you can combine, you can stack you know, ZTX and ARA Melodyne at the same time. You can do it at the same time. Do you need to do that? Not necessarily. By the way, if I go back into Melodyne here for a second and I go to the soundbite layer level and I double click, remember double click the soundbite to show it down below, then I back up here. Let me rewind to the beginning. Now let's pull this back to the top. Look how it doesn't show that move right here. Don't tell me. Melodyne is not showing that move. Why is that? Because I have to, I have to basically re-render what's happening in ZTX for it to show down below. So sometimes you'll have to decide, well, I don't really, I'm just gonna leave it. I might wanna change it. I don't wanna commit it. So, so ARA may not show it exactly the same way, right? But if I did want it to, if I did want this little section, what I might just do is you know, highlight this section, highlight this, go up to audio, merge it. It's going to re-render it. It's, it's in there now, I double click. And now it shows the new note. So that's something we can, of course, we can undo at this point. So I want you guys to see that Pure DSP is not able to be used at the same time as ARA, but ZTX can be stacked on top of it. Let's go over to DNA for a second. We're gonna close this project, and we're gonna close it, and we're gonna open up a different project, which this particular one is DNA. So this is Melodyne ARA with a guitar track, and this is Massimo Sami, film composer. Uh, and he's just sent me the simplest project, but I wanna do a couple of things with this. Very, very simple. But if we go over here into the sequence editor or double click on this, of course, it pops it up. There's nothing assigned to it. You guys know it's an easy thing to do. We'll just go to the pop-up. Let's just go to Melodyne. And let's, or we can actually also come in here and just do it on the actual soundbite itself. 
So we'll go into Melodyne. It's going to analyze it for just a second. There it is. And you guys can see that it's polyphonic. What does it sound like? Super simple, you know, it's dry, you know. We'll do a dominant set here. You know, so we're just going to go in here, and this is just a simple, easy mono audio file. You know, mono audio guitar with chords, and of course we're able to come in here and revoice the chords in a mono audio file. Now it's interesting also, I might just come in here and take, grab all these, and maybe I would want to do something like elongate these notes. You know, what would it sound like? Let's just elongate them and see what... A little long, so we'll undo. Let's make it just a little bit longer. So this is interesting, right? Somebody's done a guitar part. You all you have is a stereo mono, mono file. You're picking out the notes in the chord. You're changing the duration. This will sound a little bit more connected. Let's hear it. But what can we get away with? Let's go up to that note. Okay, so we have an interesting chord here. We can fix that, go down. I mean, so again, very simple, very clean. It actually might make you think about when you're tracking something, when you, you may not be 100% sure where you're gonna go with the chord. But you have a guitar player in the studio and obviously get a clean, good, dry signal, right? You can manipulate it with DNA Right now, remember, this is not true of essentials. This is like new unit now having bought the version five full version of Melodyne. And now you're able to change this. Now you add your processing, right? Now you go in and you add your amps and your sims and whatever it is, some of the great plugins that are out there for guitar effects. But that's a very, very simple example of using DNA to revoice, change that. Now we could get in here and change vibrato. We could do more with the tone itself. There's a lot we could do with this but that's a simple example of that. So let's close this. And obviously I can wipe this out, right? If I come back, why don't I just do that? If I close this window, maybe I would just say, well, let's just go back to my run command, clear ARA state. Are you sure you wanna do that? Sure, let's do it. So now we're back to complete square one, the durations, the pitch. So that's a quick thing that you can do. You don't always have to do that. I could have easily also just said, well, let's just not use that it would have gone back to the original. It would only be committed if I would have merged the file. So we're gonna close this example. Let's go over to a different product, right? We've spent some time with Melodyne, which is powerful. We're gonna get back into Melodyne in a second. Again, there's a lot of ground I wanna to cover today. Let's go into Spectral Layers. Spectral Layers is made by Steinberg. So it's not every day here in the Motu Digital Performer webinar that we do a Steinberg product, but yes, here we are. So what are we gonna do with this example? Here's a mix project where the vocals that were sent to me we're wet, okay? You know, life goes on, right? But sometimes you, you'd love to get a, a dry, clean stem from somebody, but sometimes it happens. And now it's like, well, can I minimize that? Because it's getting a little too smeary. It's not working perfectly. How can I get rid of it? Well, let's just use Spectral Layers. Spectral Layers is, a, is a, like a restoration plugin. It's an audio processing tool. And it reminds me a lot of like RX from Isotope. That's sort of the concept here. So let's just double click right on the lead vocal part. And you can see that here's the vocal part. Let's just go into solo mode. That's my toggle. And I'm gonna option click to make sure that I can listen. Here's the vocal track. Let's hear it. The silence is deafening. It sounds great. It's just, it's pretty wet. I have no effects on it whatsoever. What can I do with that? Well, I'm gonna right click on it, go down to ARA. Let's use spectral layers. Okay, great, there it is. Oh cool, what are we gonna do with it? Well, first and foremost, I'm just gonna select all down below and I wanna process it. What are we gonna do? We're gonna go down to reverb reduction. There it is. I play with a little bit, I think 94%. You know, sometimes it's nice to not push it too far, otherwise you start hearing artifacts. And so I'm just thinking, well, okay, well, you know, I could preview it. Let's just apply it because we can always undo it. So you'll see that it'll just take a minute to render it'll look pretty fast. So now, right off the bat, we can just back up. I can close this window. This window stays up so that you want it, if you wanted to come back in here, we can undo. What does it sound like? Well, let's just back it up. The silence is deafening. So it's, it's better. I mean, it's, it's cleaner. But 
that's something that's interesting. ARA, right in line, right? Because if I would have gone into the inserts of the mixer and tried to add that as an effect, it, it would have been probably too much of a, an envelope necessarily. It may have been more of a gate, which I don't want, right? Now I could have offlined RX, but hey, I have other plugins here and I've got ARA support here with spectral layers. So this is great. So think of it as the tool where you're coming in here. What other things can I do? Well, I can do amplitude. I can imprint various, you know, sort of EQ footprints, uh, matching, um, doing reverb reduction, hum reduction, click repair, and so on and so forth. So again, maybe you're importing tracks that have some clicks and things in them, de voice bleed, you can apply effects, and so on and so forth. And in this case, the reverb reduction, you know, I could spend more time kind of tweaking a little bit, and I, I probably should figure out, it. I mean, you know, if I can get even better results out of it. But I want you guys to see that it's just a simple concept. And of course, when I'm done, I can just close the ARA effect window up above. It reminds me, I come back a week later, what am I doing here? Oh yeah, spectral layers. Let me just double click on it. What were we doing in there? Oh, here it is. So let's fix this, do this, change this, and so on. And after I'm happy with it, you know, obviously at that point, I can just, you know, merge the file or bounce the file. So at this point, let me just right click and go down into ARA and we'll just simply take it off. So you guys can see that it's fast. And once you get into the rhythm of doing this, you know, you'll have to think about what are the ARA effects that are on the market. You saw on the list that I had, you know, we talked about Melodyne, Spectral Layers. I'm going to get into Auto Align Post real quick. It's going to go very quick. I have an example of that. In fact, we're going to close this project. We're not going to save Command D. And we're going to head over to what's next. Next is Auto Align Post. This will be a very simple example. But this is going to come in handy for those of you who do post-production audio. And it does have musical applications as well. So let's start with the musical application, which is drums. So what do we have here? We have, a, we have drum overheads, okay? And we have room mics. Now, if we look at these, you know, let's just go into the track selector and look at our drum overheads. You want to correct for the timing of the distance of microphones. So how do we do it? Well, again, simple, so simple. I'm just going to select all, okay? I'm going to go up to audio, ARA, and why don't we set in this case, auto align post on tracks. Okay, there they are. They show up down below since I had the ARA window in, in the consolidated window. And so how do, what are we going to do now? It's interesting. The question is, I would say if I click on this, if I click up here, the reference would be the room, but I don't want that. I want, I want the overheads to be the reference. In other words, the overheads are the closest to the drum kit, right? So if I set the ref for the overheads, watch what happens when I click set ref. It says, oh, I see. Yeah, give me a sec. You're the master. You're the source. And so now I'm going to update the other file to match the timing of that file. And that's what it does quickly. Now, auto line post, if you Google it or if you look at YouTube videos, use it on a, a lot of very high end post production film mixes, right? Dialogue. The, the common way to use it is for lav mics, boom mics, timing of things that happen on production sound. But there are musical applications for it. Like I'm saying in this case, now we don't have to play a lot of this here, but let me just go out here in the timeline. So it's interesting, you know, the drummer's playing, it's an interesting, with, you know, when there's a lot of stuff going on, it's very tight, solo-ish stuff. You don't want smearing, right? You want it to be as tight as possible so that all the articulation comes through. So that would be maybe a situation where, I mean, could I go in there and nudge it and stuff like, yeah, I could, but this, as you guys saw, saw, it took me no time at all. I mean, it just took no time at all. So now I close the window, I leave it real time. Yeah, that works. Auto align post. Do I merge it? Yeah, maybe I do, maybe I don't. So that's one example. Let's just mute these guys. Let's do post-production here. We'll bring up the other pair. Now this is literally a lav mic and a boom mic. And then this was given to me by the company that actually creates this. So listen to this. Let's put these guys in for a second. Uh, a personal Omni radio mic. And so as I move around, <clears throat> move further away, so now the time difference between... So he's pointing out, you know, you've got the lav right on the actor's, you know, lapel, and you've got the boom. And as he moves away, you're, the, the, the boom becomes, has more distance. Now you might think, well, again, what can we do with that? What's the disadvantage of that? Well, when you're, you know, you're on a set and you, you don't want it to sound more distant necessarily, or you just want to be able to have more control, more control of it. So how do we do it? You guys know, I select, why don't we just do it from the pop-up? We'll just do it like this. So we go back into auto line post 
And let's actually do it like, and let's actually take these guys off. So let's just select all and let's just clear these guys. We can do it right here. None, none. And these guys will go away. These guys will come in and why don't we just do it so it'll be faster. We'll just do it like this and you'll have to decide. So we're going to set auto line post on tracks. Boom, there they are. I click up above. We want the actual, I want the, the, the boom, the boom to be the actual ref, right? So that the, the, the lav mic, so now I, I hit set ref. It says, oh, hey, give me a second. Let me fix the timing of the lav to match what's happening in the boom. It's good to go. We've got much tighter integration now of the two files sonically. I close it. I move on with my day. I bounce my files. What do you guys need stem-wise? I just need a stereo mix of the two. Done. Do I need to have these individual? So again, I'm moving quickly. I just wanted to show you right now, there are really three ARA plugins that are working inside DP. Um, we talked about obviously Melodyne, Spectral Layers, Auto Line 2, uh, Post 2. Let's get into audio to MIDI. That's one of the coolest things that we've done here in 11.2. And now is a good time to actually get into that. And, and we will have time for Q&A, so hold tight. I'm going to kind of stay in this mind flow here for a little bit. I'm going to close this project and not save. And I've got a number of examples here that I want to show you guys as it relates to audio to MIDI. So let's start with my first example. So we'll go into the clean version. Yeah, we'll just go to this version here. And so it'll just take a moment to load. And again, a mix. So now this is just a, an old fashioned song here, right? This is anything spectacular. This is something that I kind of went through and thought, hey, there's a lot of great things that I can do from this particular project. There's rhythmic components, there's melodic, there's polyphonic stuff that's happening in this project. So I want you guys to think now, you're in a mindset, you're working on a song, okay? You're working on a cue. And now what can I do with audio to MIDI? Well, if you guys recall under audio, we had in the audio beats menu, there was an option where you could actually copy the beats to MIDI, okay? They took that out because now what they've done is they've consolidated all of the audio to MIDI conversions all happen now from the edit menu. And you'll see once we get into it, I'll show you how that works. So it's interesting, you know, I, I was reading on one of the, uh, somewhere on social media that someone said, oh yeah, Logic has, you know, pitch to MIDI. DP has had pitch to MIDI since DP4. I've been showing that feature since DP4, taking monophonic bass lines and converting it out to MIDI. We've had that for many, many years. Okay, it's just that now we actually have an even more advanced system based on Melodyne being integrated into it. So let's get into that more. So I'm gonna go into the first example here. I've got these sort of number here. And if I double click, it'll open me up to that spot. And what do we have in this example? So I've got a low, a conga, low conga, high conga part kind of thing here, right? And so let's see here, let's look down here at the bottom and let's actually start with looking at bar. What do we have here? Bar 115, that's my first sort of section here. And you can see that DP has done its analysis of the beats, okay? It's done that automatically. Remember in DP under preferences, if when you go up to background processing that you can analyze the beats for any project. I kind of like to tell people to turn this off by default. If you're just someone working and you don't really need to do a lot of surgery and you know quantization and stuff like that, maybe leave it off, but turn it on either for specific projects or globally. You can have it turned on globally. So what are we doing with this example? What, what's happening here? Well, I'm gonna simply highlight this audio. This audio, obviously, this is just a live audio. In fact, let's go into solo mode and I'm gonna option click and listen to this for a second. So you can hear this bleed coming from the other conga, obviously, right? That's okay. So what are we gonna do with it? We're gonna go up to edit and we're gonna go to the new feature here, copy audio to MIDI. And let's start with kind of in reverse order here. Let's go to beats. Now, we're gonna talk about, there's three different ways to convert audio to MIDI. Obviously, Melodyne, Pure DSP, and Beats. And there's four different targets for what, what are you gonna do with the result of the analysis work, okay? Now, Clipboard is great. Clipboard is great because it just puts it into the clipboard where you can paste it. Now, remember, with DP11, you can paste it to a MIDI track because it's MIDI data, but you can paste it to a combined virtual instrument track, which is even better. 
So, you know, obviously you can put it into the clipping window itself. Now this is cool, watch this. If I choose clipping window, these are all the various global and project clipping windows that I can put my conversion into. That's interesting. Maybe you would want to put it into a clipping window. You can obviously add it to a MIDI track. You can add it to a new combined instrument track. Let's just put it in the clipboard. We're going to put it in the clipboard. So when I hit OK, it's going to happen very quickly. And I'm going to go over here to Stylus. All I have to do is click on Stylus and Paste. There it is. So now what do we have? I'm just going to put this track into play. And so let's just hear what we have. Now, right off the bat, by the way, this is the analysis work that DP is doing. This isn't Melody, this is DP. And you'll notice that not only do we have great timing, we also have dynamics. It's very cool that it has dynamics. It's actually picking up on that. So now you're thinking in this track, hey, you know, it'd be cool to have like just, you know, I'm just using Stylus RMX as just a, a something with sounds, right? It could be anything, right? It could be anything. But the thing that you have to remember is, that with beats, it just puts them on one track. It's just rhythm at that point. It's just MIDI notes in rhythm with dynamics. So now, like, well, how does it sound in the track? I mean, I don't know, let's just hear what we have. Maybe we would tuck that in a little bit. There's a lot going on here, and of course this is, let me actually just mute here for just a second in the mixing board. Let's just take the sax out and a couple other instruments so we can kind of get it, hear it a little bit better. And so what do we have here with this? So, you know, it's loud right now. It's, it's not tucked in at all. But how quick is that? I mean, that's, I mean, that couldn't be faster. Highlight the note, highlight the audio, convert to beats, paste, done. Moving on. What's the next example? The next example I want to show you guys is Pure DSP. Pure DSP is Motu's own pitch algorithm that we've had for many years, which still sounds great, and I still use it all the time. Love it. So what is our example? We're going to go down in here. I've got it labeled. We're going to go into the saxophone part. So here's the sax. Let's use our track selector over here. I'm going to option click on sax to show it by itself. I'm going to add the piano down below to this. And where am I going to go? I want to go to bar 113. So I'm going to basically use on the numeric keypad 4 is my shortcut for rewind. And what is the saxophone doing here? Let's hear it. It's a cool little sort of intro-y thing, kind of soprano sounds, got a nice sort of vibe to it. What do we have to do? We'll highlight it. We're going to go right up into copy audio to MIDI. We're going to use pure DSP and we're going to put it in the clipboard. Yeah, that's where I want it. Okay, highlight it, paste. What do we have? It's assigned to a piano. What does it sound like? I don't know. Let's hear it. It's interesting how that little pickup, dee, ba, da, I could easily add that back in, but it did it amazingly well. It, I mean, this, again, you, you're, I want you guys to really think you're, in, you're just in the thick of battle. You're in a session. You don't have time to try experimenting with something for the next two hours. You just have deadlines. But you thought, someone said, you know, obviously, would it, how long would it take you to transcribe that part and rip it out on the keyboard? Two seconds, probably, right? But a tool that's built in line that will analyze it and do the dynamics and do the timing on the fly is absurd. I mean, and we haven't even gotten to Melodyne yet. So I, I, you can tell I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to hide my excitement here, but this is a very, very powerful tool. Let's just hear it for one more second. Here. Now, obviously, I could come in, look at, look at the dynamics in here. What if I said, well, that's all great. It's a little quiet. Let me go to my shortcut V for velocity, and let's just bump these guys up by 20. Uh, let's just hear it maybe too loud now. But that's the idea. So very, very cool. And that's just pure DSP from Motu. Works really, really well. Now let's get into Melodyne Melodic. Okay, my next example is bass. So let's do it. We have a bass part here, and let's go over to it. I'm going to option click on it. And what bar are we going to do for the bass? Let's see. Let's go into bar 38. Oh, this is cool. This is a fretless bass. In fact, this is played by Stan Sheldon, who, very good bass player, played with Peter Frampton for many years. Great player, friend of mine. So he's playing a fretless bass on this. And so what, let's do something kind of fun with it. First of all, let's just hear the part by itself. <laughs> You'll have to see that this is a really cool sort of bridge section of this sort of jazzy pop tune. Listen to what he's doing here. Here's the track. This is very cool. It's kind of jocko y sounding in there. Very cool. Um, let's do something with it. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to go up to Copy Audio to MIDI. Let's use Melodyne. And now let's just break down, by the way, 
some of these various types of algorithms because it's just worth very quickly going over it. Automatic, this is cool. It does a pre-scan, a pre-pass, and it picks the best algorithm for you. That's actually pretty cool. So when in doubt, just use automatic. Universal is meant more for time stretching and transposition where you don't need individual notes. Percussive is obviously non-tonal rhythm, non-tonal rhythm. Pitched percussion, obviously that kind of goes without saying, you know, something very tight, you know, xylophone, things like that where it's pitched, but it's tight and it's percussive. Melodic is perfect for this, right? This sort of, you know, very melodic bass line. Now, polyphonic sustain, right? That's for obviously polyphonic chordal type audio files. Sustain is legato. And decay is for shortened pizzicato type material. So this is perfect for melodic. I'm gonna hit okay. Here's my workstation. Let me, oh look, so it's gonna do its work, right? Depending on how long and how large the actual material is, it's done. So we're gonna go back to workstation. I'm gonna highlight workstation. I'm gonna paste. Now I picked as a sound in workstation, a fretless bass. So let's hear them together, just first and foremost. Listen to this lick. It's kind of pretty much nailed that. In a way, it's, it's, it's interesting that it's not perfect. I mean, obviously, think about this for a second. Oh, and I do like to sometimes pop out and go, is anybody actually still here? Wow. No. Um, MIDI is MIDI 1, right? We're still dealing with MIDI 1, guys. All of this technology is MIDI 1. What does that mean? Well, when MIDI 2 comes out, will it be different? That's an interesting question. I need to actually ask the developers about that. So what are we going to do with this? Let's just do something cool with this, by the way, which is I'm going to take, because this is kind of a fun idea, I'm going to highlight these pitch these pitches that I got out of Melody Melodic, and I'm going to go up to Region Transpose. And I know that this particular part is in D major, but I'm going to actually scale it up so it's now harmonizing. So what does it sound like? Now what's interesting is when it gets to this, it goes to D minor. Watch, I'll take it out of the track, I'll unsolo it. And it goes to F minor. And also, da -da -da, minor. Oops, I'm on a I want to stay on the grid there. Let me undo, and let me actually go up here and turn on my fixed grid for a, something like an eighth note is fine. I want to go down to D minor. Let's hear the lick. That's pretty cool. I mean, the bass player left, you know, months ago, and we want to do some kind of cool little thing. Now, could I take the audio and repitch it and do the harmony with the audio? Sure. Pitch to MIDI, though. I, I decided, you know what? We don't want it to be a, ba a, a fretless sound. We want it to be anything, a bassoon. I mean, I don't really want a bassoon necessarily, but, but you get the idea, right? This is, this is so fun. This is so freeing. I mean, it's hard for me to honestly even believe that Digital Performer, as great as it is, with all these insanely powerful features, has this built in now, where I can just work quickly and not have to think, oh, do I have, can, is this going to work? It's going to work. It's going to work. Next up is Shaker. We're, gonna, we're almost done here to where we're going to get to some questions, but there's other important ones I want to show you. So hang in there, folks. What next is Shaker. So what do we have here? We're going to go into Mr. Shaker part, which is here. And what bar am I doing for the Shaker? We're going to go into bar 115. Here it is. And let's just show the track by itself. And so we're going to use this to, Melodyne for this. So what does it sound like? Let's just go into Soul and hear it. You know, very simple. That kind of a thing. So let's just highlight it. We're going to go up to edit. We're going to actually go into copy audio to MIDI. Let's go to Melodyne. Let's go into, did I use last time? I said, I think I must have used um, Universal. I used Universal. I could have used Percussive, but Universal, remember, is really meant for not the individual notes themselves. So Universal should work well in this case. It's set to clipboard. I hit OK. I go into the shaker, which is in model 12. Let me let it finish its, its job first. Highlight it, paste. There it is. Now, I know that mod I'm going to just use model 12, right? But it's not assigned to a note that's actually going to play. So let me just go into the MIDI editor for just a second for this. And we're going to look at model 12. And let me just zoom out for a second. We'll magnify these notes a little bit. We'll go up to the top. I'm going to highlight you guys. And we need to bring you down to a note that sounds. So let me make sure my grid is set big for a second. Well, what do we have down here? I think we can, I think something like F3. Let's just see. 
Yeah, that works. So let's just hear it now back in the sequence editor. Let's hear this. So you hear that? Da -da -da. Da -da -da. So it's, 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 it's absolutely playing perfectly, perfectly with the shaker now assigned to model 12. And it's just good to go. It's done. And remember that it's preserved the dynamics. Look at all the dynamics down there. Let me just get rid of the shaker and listen to just the Model 12. Now, it's not the world's greatest sample necessarily. Uh, that's not going to win any awards, but the timing of being able to rip that out of there is just phenomenal. Now let's do polyphonic. Obviously, that's where it gets pretty serious. And I have some examples of this. Let's go over to the guitar strum track. So let's just stay in here, go to guitar strum. There you are. What bar are we looking at for Mr. Guitar Strum? Bar 91. This is all in one project, by the way. The project's done, and now you're just wanting to maybe make some little improvements. So what do we have here? Well, okay, we have a guitar strum. Let's, let's just hear a few bars of this. So it's, you know, it's pretty complex. Pretty complex. So what, what, how should we address this here? Well, let's figure this out. Let's actually go into, we definitely want to use Melodyne because it's polyphonic. Right, that kind of gives it away. So we go into copy audio to MIDI, we use Melodyne, but we're going to do sustain, right? These are long notes, right? So we're going to pick sustain, clipboard, yes. Do I want to put it in clips? I didn't mention that option earlier. If you like it to have it in that box form, that you can then, you know, repeat it and drag it out and stuff like that. Uh, I tend to not use clips for things like this. I want to be able to grab the notes immediately in the regular layer. But again, everybody's different. Hit OK. And now it should be thinking here. It's going to think. It's going to be analyzing the guitar part here. So, and I've got, and we'll wait here for it to finish. And depending on, you know, again, how fast your computer is and how demanding, you know, the, the segment of audio is, there it is. So we're going to highlight, I've got a piano tech down below. Now in this piano tech, I actually am using, I guess in this particular one, let's actually make it something other than uh, a classical piano. Let's just do something like, a, you know, a, a, a a Rhodesy kind of sound, tremolo kind of sound, instead of an acoustic piano. All right, so anyway, paste. Whoa, whoa, what do we have here? Now, here's something interesting, okay? And I want you guys to see that this is a real world example. If I play you these low notes, okay, that's not really happening in this audio file if I highlight this in option space bar. Now there is sort of this pedal thing happening that it's going, it's underneath this pedal, but it's, now remember, how well was the guitar recorded? Is there room tone? Is there processing? There's a lot of factors. And then remember MIDI itself, to take this Melodyne. So I know one thing off the bat, these are kind of, this is a pedal sort of overtone that's being sort of imposed down below. So I'm just going to highlight it, click on M for mute, and now let's put it with the track. We're going to listen to this guitar strum with Mr. Piano Tech Rhodes. I mean, that's, that's really, really good. I mean, again, this is a, kind of a deliberately difficult section, se segment, I should say. It missed a couple of little notes. This da da d when it goes back up. I didn't hear it in this section. Could I add it in two seconds? Absolutely. I've got the visual reference to do that. I've got dynamics. I've got the rhythm. And now it's just a layer, right? It's just a layer. So I go into here and I say, well, show me this in the mixing board. Oh, let me go to sh Shift M. And what do we have? And the zoom controls are always in the way. What are you going to do? And so we're going to go into guitar strum. And there he is. So this is going to be tucked in here. I mean, that, you have to admit, that's pretty absurd for just on the fly, polyphonic transposition of something where you've got held notes, you've got rhythm. Now, by the way, I want to mention something really important. You don't own Melodyne, the full version. You only have the essentials. Can I do polyphonic audio to MIDI conversion? Yes. So even though you don't own the full version, you can still do this, which is pretty amazing. So I've got some other stuff that I really want to show you as well. 
because I want to go over to another quick example. This is a this is the example I want to show you here, and I'm just going to say, yeah, don't save, don't worry about it. We're going to close this up. And in this example here, this is a very, very common project you're going to be working on in your studio, right? Somebody's sending you, you've got audio, you've got two audio files. And you're thinking, you know, I'd like to actually take this cello part. So here's just super, super simple. I've got a BBC orchestra bit, bass pits in here. What are we going to do with it? We're just going to go into the sequence editor and we've got piano, cello. What does it sound like? It sounds like this. It's very kind of a typical kind of a pop thing, right? And it's like, well, you know, could you rip that out really easily? Yeah, but watch how fast I can actually take this part right here. And I'm just going to go up. And what am I going to do with it? Yeah, we're probably going to want melodic is my guess. It's sort of, uh, well, although it's short too, but it's not polyphonic, right? So we're going to go into copy audio to MIDI, melodic. Uh, yeah, let's go to melodic. We're going to hit OK. We're going to highlight the bass part. We're going to let it finish, not get ahead of ourselves. Highlight it, paste it in. Now, what register is it in? That's an interesting question. So let's just mute these guys and hear what we have in the bass. We'll rewind a little bit. Let's hear it. Oh, that's good. Now let's hear it with the track now. I mean, can, I couldn't do that faster. There's, there's no way on, on God's green earth that I could have done that faster. If I would have even gone to the keyboard and played it in one pass, just I, I, I got perfect pitch. I mean, no way you could have done it faster. There's no way. Copy it, paste, done. That, now, remember, you're working on cues. You don't have MIDI. You just have audio. And it's just, you're flying through. You're flying through. And this is incredibly powerful in, inside Digital Performer. And it's just astounding. Last example. Last example. We're going to close this, and we will open it up. And I promise we're going to have some questions. But I just wanted to make sure you guys could see that there's a lot of power here that's happening. And this free update for DP, which I love. So I don't know what this not sure is, but it's going bye-bye. So let's open up this one. So here's another example of everyday track, piano vocal. What are we going to do with this? Well, let's see what we can do. So first of all, let's just hear a couple bars of this. Me and the moon and stars Very pretty, you know, kind of. It's a Massimo Salmi track. And what are we going to do with it? Well, first and foremost, it'd be nice to have a, let's, let's take this, this vocal part. Okay. Let's take, well, let's just take these, these, this right here, these two first sections. Let's just merge them together. I'm going to highlight this and we're going to go up to edit and we're going to actually copy audio to MIDI and let's use melodic. That team tends to be a good one. I'm going to highlight it in the flute. Now, in the flute, I've just doubled the lead vocal part. Now, for the flute, I also added a transpose plug into the flute, so it's taking it up a full octave. So now we've just doubled the lead melody. Let's hear it. Me and the moon and stars, they hold my I mean, what's scary is, is how this, not only are we dealing with the notes, the timing, we're dealing with the durations and the dynamics. That Melodyne engine is so good, but our developers are able to put it in such a musical way. That's what blows my mind about, you know, it's, it's one thing when, when DAWs add features, every DAW can add a feature. The way that we do it, the, the musical way we do it is kind of absurd. That's what I love so much about it. So what about the piano? What can we do with the piano? This is interesting. This is, uh, you know, this is polyphonic stuff here. Let's solve the piano by itself. What do we have? So you can see it's got that very nice sort of dissonant kind of vibe to it. But we can, let's, let's do something with it right off the bat. And now how far are we going to go? We don't want to go too far because we don't want to take up too much time in analysis. But let's just say whatever. This looks like a kind of a natural break right here at the downbeat of nine. So let's just cut it there. By the way, I, I park my wiper where I want to make a cut. And I, I select all option Y, cut at the wiper, boom, cut. Highlight this. We're going to go up. Now we need polyphonic, audio to MIDI. We need Melodyne, and we need Sustain. Those are nice long notes. They're not short at all. We're going to hit OK. And it's going to do its thing. It's going to analyze the audio. And so here's what I, here's what I was thinking. I want to create a pad, a synth pad under the piano, 
just like a now remember this is like let's say this is a cue later on in the film they're going to kind of it's sort of a, a revision oh they're going to go back and it's you know here here's the second we're going to hear this cue again but it's different now what, what can you do with it it's a pretty tall order here i guess this analysis work so i have a falcon and we're going to highlight it and we're going to paste it in now i'm not even going to i'm not even going to spend time looking at the notes i know it's good so i'm just going to blend it now so what does that mean? So we're going to play the whole cue. We're going to tuck in the flute and we're going to tuck in the pad. And now we're going to hear what it came up with. So let's see, you we'll start from bar one and let's hear it. Let's pull the pad way down here. Vocal's not in yet. Pad is killing it right now. I haven't even checked the notes. I, it's probably needs a little help. Love, I didn't go long enough, but life goes on. Me and the moon and stars, they... But anyway, that's as far as I want to get today. You can you have to stop me at some point, but it's so fun. You guys just have to get in there and play with it because you just can't believe how musical it is. A question somebody posted earlier, until we get a couple raised hands, I'm sure there are some. Uh, if you clear the ARA state as you did before, uh, will it clear all Melodyne work that had been done on other tracks or just that current track? It's a very good question, and it does everything project-wide. Everything project-wide. In fact, I actually verified this because I thought, oh, when I originally got this project together for you guys, I did it as chunks in a project. It got a little bit too big for my laptop, so I broke it all out. But when I actually clear ARA state, it actually does so for even the other chunks in a project. Um, but it does come in handy. Remember, you're in a situation where things are a little bit dicey as it comes to, it doesn't happen very often, but you can clear the state. Um, I, I'm not, I don't think that auto line two is a vocal production tool necessarily. I'm saying, could you use it for vocal timings? Yes. I think when we finally have, you know, ARA support for Revoice Pro, that's sort of the, the ultimate in synchro arts technology or vocal line ultra. Those are background vocals. Could you use it? Yeah. Try it. Right. Try it. In fact, I wanted to come up with an example with ADR. I mean, I, I got a nice example there with a lot of boom mic combination that worked really well, but yeah, try it with vocals. It's not really designed for that. I would say in a way, you know, try it, but also if you were thinking about buying something, you might be better off waiting for Revoice Pro 4. Uh, Ed Auslander said, when pasting audio to MIDI, does it automatically align and paste in the right Perfectly. time? Perfectly. In fact, don't reselect. Does that make sense? The, I find the results are when it puts it in the clipboard. Remember, clipboard is all about pasting. When you do, when it knows the selection, just highlight the destination. I would pick a virtual instrument. I mean, you could certainly pick a MIDI track. Paste. Don't reselect. It does it perfectly. Uh, any pitch bend or modulation for midiing audio variations? In other words, if you have not audio, much. will it do pitch bend? Yeah, not much. I mean, it's interesting, like where you have MPE or something where you have slides and things. You notice that, again, and maybe that would change with MIDI too. You know, but for the time being, like you said, and I've noticed here's something it does do like on, on some notes where it kind of blues slides in and there's a double blah kind of thing. It, it can do that pretty well. The slides themselves, not so much, you know, so with, remember with MIDI, here's what you would have to do, honestly, get a very clean version of the MIDI and print it as audio. And then maybe you could go into our pitch layer or Melodyne and then draw in that little shape if you needed it to be absolutely you know, unison. So let, let me see, show of hands here. Are you guys impressed so far with 11.2? Excellent. You know, I was just thinking about 11 in general. Let me just kind of brag here for just a second on Motu for a second. So DP11, right? Chunks, chunk window folders, playlist, split view, control surface support for VRAX, complete control, articulation maps, MPE, console one support, combined virtual instruments, ARA, audio to MIDI, all within one version of DP11. So we're on a really on a roll lately at Motu. I feel like the, the program has never been better in terms of its efficiency and its power. So it's a great time to be a user. And for you guys to, you know, get out there and tell colleagues and people, um, you know, express yourself on, you know, social media for DP. It's just, it's doing really well right now. And we're very, very excited about it. But yeah, any questions you guys have about anything here at the end? There's time. One from Robert Martson. Hey, um, how about in terms of uh, playing piano and improvising and then using this technology to, uh, you know, to print out 
what you improvised. Transcriptions. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, one of the things I found, because when I first got the feature, I'm like, oh, let me test this. Let me see how bad, how quickly I can break it. You know, of course, that's what we all want to do, right? And so you might, you know, like you, like obviously Rob, you know, he's a concert pianist. He plays really well. And so he's playing in a bunch of sophisticated parts. Now, one thing I've noticed is that it's the durations that's the most difficult part. The notes themselves, now granted, it's sometimes with complex chords, it can be it's a little bit dicey. If it's played very cleanly, in fact, it might be a really good idea. You want a transcription, Rob, so you place it very simply, no sustain. You're playing it at a moderate tempo. You're just getting clean MIDI so that then you can speed it up. Then you can transpose it. You know what I'm saying? Always think about just, I need it clean. I need it raw. And now I can manipulate it because it's MIDI. So think like that as you're doing a transcription. But I find the durations themselves, because here's what happens, right? You play a note on the piano. Let's say you're going to a different chord. Now that note lasts, let's say, three beats. I find that in MIDI, it lasts a beat. It lasts a half a beat. It, MIDI is just does not have enough decay time. It, so that's where it gets a little challenging. The examples I used, you know, I was pretty happy with. The durations came through, but that's it's all really good stuff. You'll just play with it and try it. How about one from John Boylan if his mic will open? Did that work, John? And Matt, you mentioned control surface support. I just mm -hmm. got one of those Behringer one touch things. Mm -hmm. um, is there somewhere where it's posted the best profile to use? That's interesting. Uh, I would say, you know, I think, you know, MCU, I think that's the protocol. MCU. Uh, so Mackie Control Universal. Oh, yeah. All right. I'll try that. I've only you try I, that. I hooked it up with Pro Tools. It was OK. And I, I tried to hook it up with DP to work on this audio book thing I'm doing now. And I uh, it, it, it seemed to be a little discombobulated, but I'll try MCU. Thanks. Yeah, try it out. That's a good question. Thanks, John. Hey, real quick reminder for everybody. I'm sure most of you have an iPad or access to an iPad. Real quick point I want to make. Everybody should be aware of this. DP's Yukon support, remember, the Avid Control is free, and it's a very powerful, fun app. I mean, here I am promoting Avid. No, Avid, he makes some great products, right? Artist Control for iPad works really well with DP. And so maybe Glenn would post his video or a link to it. It's super easy to set up and you'll and you have touch control over digital performer, even if you already have control surfaces. Remember in DP, you can have multiple control surfaces at the same time. You could have Yukon, you could have MCU. At some point, by the way, we're gonna get back into Metagrid. Metagrid Pro came out. I want to show you guys the new features in Metagrid Pro. That's on my list of things to show you. A lot of cool stuff happening. Somebody asked, do you need to enable ARA or does it automatically show up in the sequence window? It will automatically, remember now, install the VST3 version, make sure it's up to date, make sure it passes ARA compatibility, and then remember, you can assign it to sound bites or tracks, So and then you can decide whether it's in the consolidated window or not. So yeah, it will show up, just make sure the VST3 version is there. By the way, I didn't mention this earlier, if you're somebody who already has projects in audio unit, let's say you've, you know, you've got some projects that you're using Melodyne in the more traditional way as an audio unit plugin, can, can you still have both? You can, you can. It's just that the ARA compatibility comes from the VST3 version, that's all. Yeah, uh, I, I take it the spectral layers and acoustica and stuff like that, those are separate programs or something? Or That's exactly right. It's a good point that I wanted to bring up that I should have brought up, which is, you know, Essentials comes with DP. It's great. It's a part of your license. Spectral layers and others are additional programs that you would buy as VSTs. Prices are pretty good on some of those. Spectral layers isn't particularly expensive. Uh, auto align post, I think it's, you know, a hundred ish or maybe under 200. And so you'll just kind of make a list of those that you'll want to purchase. And again, the list is growing and we wanted to actually be able to whitelist the synchro arts, but hang in there. That's one that I want to see as well. I know many of you guys will use that as your, with your vocal production, but obviously Melodyne is first and foremost, it's their technology. So, and the integration so far with DP has been spot on and matt somebody asked if the, you have any idea what the timing will be for synchro arts it's a good question i mean there's another sort of well-known dog getting ara support which you know wink wink but we'll see when that all sort of pushes through then we'll see if the channel is open for us to finish our support as well if that some, makes sense some folks asked about rx Oh, RX. Well, that's an interesting. With Chris Peck is here if he wants to chime in on that. As far as I understand, ARA. I think it, I think it comes with version ten. Although I'm not. There's, there's a new announcement. I I'm not up to, de to date on what the latest is with RX and ARA. But just know that when it happens, obviously we we want to support it. 
Matt, Fernando's question was, can you use multi-MIDI channels on combined virtual instruments? Yes, you can. That's a good question. We'll have to revisit that at one point. So the new combined instrument track in DP, by the way, everyone should start using that. That's really, really cool. It uses host automation. So it's even finer detail when it comes to audio and volume moves. So combined instruments are great. Now, some of you obviously have multi-timbral instruments where you use multiple MIDI channels, but in one combined instrument track, you can have 16 MIDI channels. So that's very cool. Like I showed an example when we first launched it where I had Stylus RMX on one instrument track and I had different MIDI volumes and different MIDI channel assignments for individual parts within one track. So yeah, that's, there's a lot of cool things you can do with that. And that yes, that's, that's true. Uh, Chris Peck said RX only supports ARA and Logic Pro right now, but they hope to expand that as soon as they can. Perfect. So, oh, by the way, it's the kind of thing where if you send a suggestion to us saying, hey, wouldn't it be great? Also, by the way, send it to the other company and just you know, take a minute, if you wouldn't mind, and say, hey, we'd love to see it in DP. And they, they, they do like to respond to user requests. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Adam. And Dan Wool asked, is it better to send a lot of suggestions at once to Mo2 or one at a time? Because he's got 200 suggestions. Oh, uh, I mean, you know, please do send a few. I mean, just remember, we're always thinking about development cycles. Um, and so, you know, what's going to happen, but yeah, I mean, you could certainly send a big list. There's a lot of great suggestions out there. I, I help kind of keep track of them. I have sort of my own list of things. I know a lot of professionals. We have so many pros on here right now. It's just fun to look out and see all you guys who are doing so many big things. And we've got Grammy award winners, Academy award winner. I mean, this is a, a, a great list. It's an honor to work with you guys today, but know that DP is at the top of its game. And there's a few things I want to do in the next version. I'm, I'm going to have help push for in the next version of DP 12, but it's the kind of thing that we want to know from you guys. Now that we have articulation maps, we have MPE, ARA, I mean, chunks, VREX, combined instrument tracks. If you look at the list, I mean, it's pretty unbelievable right now. We, we also have a bunch of our of former guest presenters, including Joey Newman, who asked all the Melodyne options, universal melody, perk, whatever, uh, that mm -hmm. you had in the drop-down menu while using copy audio, audio to MIDI. Do you need to own the full Melodyne version or can Essentials cover that? Oh, and I did explain that. They're all there. That's so cool about it. Essentials gives you every one of those different algorithms when it comes to audio to MIDI, even the polyphonic, if, even if you only own Essentials. So, but by the way, you know, you can use that as a coupon. Remember the, the voucher that we give you guys, maybe if you own an older version of Melodyne, Spend the money and get the DNA so that you have all the polyphonic pitch correction. It's so cool. It's so worth it. Well, we're going to wrap everybody and do use tech links. Actually, I just got a note from the office. I mean, we do want your suggestions at suggestions.com, but if there is a technical issue that's ongoing, you, we have our tech link uh, way to get to that from our website. So anyway, thank you guys for being here. It's awesome to see you. Have a wonderful day and uh, see you next time.